Hello Culturally Curious, welcome to Free Sculpture 2024. We're here in Regent's Park in London at a time when the capital comes to life with art and design with Freeze London, Freeze Masters and London Sculpture Week. We've got an opportunity today to speak with curator Fatos Yustek about this incredible public exhibition, which is filled with over 22 renowned artists from over five continents and addresses themes which are daring, experimental, environmentally conscious and looking at conditions of the human self. Let's take a look around. So Fatosh, thank you for joining us today and talking to us at The Wick. What an incredible project, congratulations. Why do you think sculpture is so important, not just for the capital of London, but for cities as a whole? The cities are really defined by the social relationships that they generate. Sculpture outdoors are kind of like the fantastic denominators of the place. How do we build meaning and the sense of belonging and sense of relationship? Sculpture uh, has that immediate relationship with our bodies, connection with the scale of the human side, and then if there's something monumental that kind of like gives you the idea of like vulnerability. It's all about cultivating different perspectives and different viewpoints. That surprises us to think something different that might actually inform our way of being in the world, belief systems and, and our intellectual, our emotional and uh, physical engagement with the world. Your work generally is very involved with concepts and elements of time and history and where we view or how we view our lives. In summer of 2023, during an excavation uh, for a development site in London, they have uncovered one of the largest Roman mosaics. And this piece presents a speculative archaeological site, uh, which invites the viewer to kind of time travel. It consists of um, over 14,000 handmade stones, and it's all made from from reclaimed construction materials that I found across different construction sites in London. I like the idea that it is interacting with the landscape, but it kind of follows quite naturally the undulation of the grounds. I really wanted it to be absorbed by, by the ground mm. progressively, so it appears as though it was really here for centuries yeah. and it's just an excavation site that was found. And it's also quite, quite humble as it, it disappears into yeah. the into the landscape, it's kind of which a natural is course yeah, of life, isn't it? Exactly. The title of the work is Crude Hints, and it takes its inspiration from the essay by Sir John Soane called Crude Hints Towards the History of My House, written in 1812. Um, I was an artist in residence at the Sir Johnson Museum for the past three months. The concept of the work is largely inspired by, by Sohn, by architecture, by his way of bringing archaeology, magic and architecture together. I'm very drawn to medieval cosmology. Medieval writers were very well aware that the world never stood still. And I think it is a quote of uh, Bartholomeus Anglicus who quotes St. Ambrose when he says that stones are the bones of the of the earth preventing it from coming apart you've chosen from a wide array of artists across five continents it's a mammoth job to actually go about even thinking which artists to include which sculptors to shortlist how do you go about that process i'm dealing with artists and artistic positions that look at the expanded notion of sculpture you can't have one single team one overarching uh, framework for the whole selection we have half of the show as new commissions to invite artists to kind of like think about the specificity of the regions part such as Francis's work behind us. This kind of totem-like structure actually brings a critique of the dependency of the human condition. Woody de Otello, he's talking about the Dogon culture, the connection of like both axes. These kind of conceptions you can also find in different myths and traditions. We also start the exhibition with Leonora Carrington, a very well-known surrealist artist. The sculpture is one of the figures that she has depicted in her paintings from 1950s onwards. This is Inchi Evena, yes. who is a Turkish artist. Exactly. I love this work. It's very, sort of has performative elements, right? Exactly. This is like a stage-like sculpture and it's composed of 25 what Inji calls props. They're not sculptures uh, per se, but they're also like a kind of like triggers for your mind theatre. 
And it's so refreshing to see that three quarters of the 22 sculptures are actually female artists. This exhibition is for your eyes, but also for your forces of imagination. And I do believe that with uh, female sculptors, we had the chance of like really uh, introducing a depth.